If those at SUSE don't raise their hands, I'm pretty... Okay, Roman and Jos are already not listening to my session anymore. That's a good start within the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I'm not like can and throw stuff at them. So, <laughs> actually it's the other way around. Interesting. So, let's talk a little bit about who is using open source software in the enterprise. Anyone, any ideas? Bruno, who is using it? The CIO. The, the, the CIO is using, okay. I was more thinking about who not in terms of the CIO or the CEO. Actually, he might also use it. The CFO as well. Um, maybe even the front desk uses it. But, I mean, who in terms of companies? Who comes to your mind? Enterprises, businesses. Who do you think is using open source software? Oracle is using open source software. Okay, who else? Google. Google is a good example as well. <laughs> London Stock Exchange, yeah, that's one of the more exotic things, but true. Any other ideas who might use open source software? Everyone who's connected to the internet? Well, that's... Well, that's good. Most of the web companies, most of the companies who are using the web as their primary interface are using open source software. Big data analysis, yeah. There are open source usages for it, yeah. Anyone is a very close thing because what I realize is we're, we're focusing pretty much on the server side of things and on the operating system side or on the web server side of things. But Android is a good example as well. So iOS, yeah. Yeah. WebKit? Yeah. TVs using open source software. But basically what Roman said is the right thing. Anyone is using open source software. In most companies you will find Firefox as the default web browser, independent of the operating system. So that's open source software. Many companies are using Thunderbird for emailing. Um, there are very much, very many other examples for that. And so, as an end result, really everyone can use it, and most are using it today. And this really ranges from the small enterprise, the small bakery around the corner that might do their shopping for flour and stuff like that over the internet using Firefox most likely going against an Apache web server, which is also, again, open source. And we actually have open source software all around us, independent of business, enterprise world, or personal life, like Jos pointed out. Even iOS has open source components, though Apple is not seen as an open source company. So why? Why are companies using open source software? What are the reasons for it? Cheap, yeah. Open source software is cheap. Vendor independence, yes. Everyone knows what a vendor lock-in is, right? You, you don't know it, oh? Yeah, some companies might not know that it's open source. That's true, but that's also true. They don't know it. Quality. Quality can be a point. What, what, what do you mean with quality of open source software? I mean, if I... Well, OpenSSL, but OpenSSL is a good example for quality. I mean, even there was the Heartbleed issue in OpenSSL. It was public pretty much when it was discovered and it got fixed. If there is an issue in some proprietary software, there might be a severe issue. Do you really know about it? Will it hit the tech news? Do you think it will in any case? No, most likely or 
pretty much we can't tell if it will hit the news or not. Someone is reporting this issue to the proprietary vendor. He might fix it or he might decide to not fix it. But with open source, well, there is quite some pressure, at least for some components, to actually fix broken and security relevant stuff in also in a timely manner. So that can also be a reason why companies are using open source, despite being vendor independent. Any other reasons that you can think about? <laughs> yeah, enjoying some guarantees from a license might be among the reasons. Anything else? It's easy to integrate. It's easy to integrate. Really? It's open source, you can adapt it. That's the point. You can change it. You can adapt it to your needs. That Sorry? Yes. Yeah. Wider industry support. That's also true. It's wider support, more people actually working on it than it might be the case for a single company if you just look at who is contributing to the kernel and how much developers are working on things like the Linux kernel, then this is nothing that any single company can provide in terms of developer resources. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, it's the standard also in many areas. That's also true. Um, but then it's not, an, it's not really an active choice anymore. It's like you are locked in to, you have the vendor lock in into open source, basically. But in there, you got all of the choices. Trust. Trust can also be a reason to choose it. Trust in the community. You know what it does? Yeah, you have access to the code. You can identify what it does if you are interested in that part, and you can typically not do that with proprietary software. Any more reasons? Get fixes quite quickly. That might be a reason, but th but there is no guarantee for it. So you will get a fix eventually, but if it's really timely or more timely with proprietary, hmm, can be a reason. I wouldn't put it that high on my list. It, it is a good reason. You will get fixes and you can get them maybe more quickly. So one of the main reasons for companies to use open source is definitely the cost reduction thing. Um, IT has is no longer something that you really want to invest into as a company, as long as you're not a technology company, but it is something you need to do, and it's merely a cost center anymore. So you want to keep, you will need to use more IT resources, specifically as all of us now have smartphones, we are used to easy technology access, so you need to have quite a lot of technology, a lot of IT, but of course you don't want to spend millions of dollars on your IT infrastructure, specifically if that's not your primary income sector. Say you're, you're an automobile in, in the automotive industry, you are building cars, then you are making money off cars, you're not making money off your IT infrastructure. Of course if your IT infrastructure certain, at some point in time breaks, you're doomed, you're not making any money anymore, but in the first place, use of open source is mainly, at least from a decision maker level, it is we want to save money by using open source software. The philosophy behind it might be interesting to some of the decision makers, but it's mostly for the techies that might have the philosophy in mind and that might also see the other good reasons like getting fixes earlier, having the ability to look into the code and things like that. 
So what open source components are actually used in the enterprise? What can you think of? We already talked about basically the operating system and we're at the OpenSUSE conference, so obviously the operating system, web companies using Apache, we talked about Firefox, but are there any other things that you have on top of your mind that people are using? Databases. True. Databases. Any other? Version control systems. Yeah. Mostly if you're a tech company. Web server. Yeah. Firewall. Security related things. We had OpenSSL. Any other things there? Sorry? Desktop software, yeah. That's among those. Anything else? You know that that's open source and that's used in enterprises or that might be used in enterprises. Development framework, yeah. Again, if you're a tech company, if you're a software company. Mail servers, yeah. Also a good part of it. There are actually business applications out there that are open source. There are things like OpenERP, which provides you with an open source alternative to solutions provided by big blue or red corporations. So they are open source. They provide you with HR software, CRM, um, stock ma um, management solutions, um, budgeting, finance applications, and so on. There are whole small enterprise server solutions available that integrate with the operating system that deliver you basically what this big Redman company used to deliver in their small business server, mail solution, um, directory server, but also enterprise applications on top of it. So it's really the whole range of open source software that is used in the enterprise. It really goes from just the operating system to full-blown applications, everything. And there are open source enterprise applications available. So you can really build an enterprise on top of completely relying on open source software with no need for any proprietary software parts inside. So now to the interesting part about open source. Open source is about giving and taking. So, so far we have talked about who is using open source, why are they using open source, what are they using, but the interesting question as we're at an open source event is, are they actually giving something back? What's your take? Yeah. The kernel is mostly developed by paid developers. Yeah, that's true. There are contributions, mainly Intel, Oracle, also Microsoft contributing to the kernel, then of course Red Hat, SUSE, and so on. But what about this? I mean, we talked about who is using it, and we actually identified that it's really from the small bakery around the corner to enterprises like London Stock Exchange. Who is giving back, and are they actually giving back? Most of them are not. That's true. Unfortunately. Yeah, some of them are giving back by buying support from some company or some individual who might be working on a project like I mentioned Open ERP. If you want then to configure it for you because it's not that easy doable. So you are paying someone and that one might be a contributor, so you are giving back indirectly. Some are paying to develop new features, yeah. That's what we also heard from 
in many cases, and that's what the business model for many consulting, open source consulting companies actually is. You need a feature in open source, so please develop it. Any other idea? They provide infrastructure. Yeah, that's also a good point. Some of them are hosting open source projects, so also more or less indirectly giving back to the open source community. So, if we want to face the reality, then some are contributing. It's really the minority, and some are contributing more, some are contributing less. There are companies that are extremely active as uh, open source users, and they are extremely contributing back, and I'm not talking necessarily about the open source companies, but rather about the closed source proprietary companies that are actually using it to do business that are actually contributing quite a lot into that space. But the vast majority of companies who is using open source, unfortunately, is not giving back. Universities, Universities are giving back, typically, in one way or the other. Um, and they are also a good amount of users of open source software. Well, end user donations are one thing, but what I always get the impression is um, we have companies using open source software, and that seems to be, and many people are complaining about them not giving back. And you bring up a very good point. How many end users do we have that use open source software, and how much are they giving back? If we look at statistics from OpenSUSE, for example, how many people downloaded OpenSUSE who are using it and how many are contributing back, that's also the same applies as for enterprises. So, actually, you disagree, Robert? That's true. Many use, at least, or they talk to their friends about it. I'm using OpenSUSE or Debian or whatever. Why don't you use it? Or I'm using this open source tool. Why don't you use it? So, yeah, that's true. They are also give, they might give back more because when have you last heard your baker to telling you that he's using Firefox to browse the web or your bank um, bank's ATM, which might not run this um, unsupported uh, Redmond product anymore, but maybe might run on some open source solution. When have you heard your bank talk about that? Um, most likely never, but there are some out there that are actually doing that. So yeah, users might give back more, but some companies are giving back and that's already a good start. And I think we also need to um, make sure that we make it easy for them to give back. And actually licensing for that part is a good way of ensuring that they can give back because companies are typically afraid of anything that has to do with licensing or copyrights and stuff like that. And unfortunately, I'm already at the end of my session. That's way too quick. Hmm. Make something up. That's good. So, uh, for the next 30 minutes of my session, I'm going to dance on this table. No, let's not do that. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> Let me think about that. So, so are, are there any questions around this topic? I mean, you decided to go into this session, so you maybe had something in mind that I would be talking about, and most likely did not. Bruno, let me appoint you to be the runner with the microphone. Okay, um, a question or an idea is, uh, 
it's really difficult for a, a small enterprise <laughs> users of open source software to say, okay, I, we really use and, and, and love to use this product in, in, a, in our enterprise and how we can uh, give back. The easiest thing f to do for an enterprise is giving back money. But giving back money uh, has an and legal entity has some rules to be respected. And so uh, how I didn't, didn't have an answer about how can a community projects uh, be more uh, aware about the fact how a donation made by uh, an enterprise could be yeah, more smooth. Well, the, the easiest solution for that one is actually always to found some kind of a foundation. Because if you look at many open source projects, then it is hard to donate money to them because there is no entity to donate to. So um, Michael Meeks in his keynote talked about the different formats that you can use and why they did it for the Document Foundation. And that's pretty much one reason you have a legal entity that you can give to, that you can donate money to. And the only thing that you could actually do as a company is go to some other company that you know is working on this open source project and fund a week of development on whatever they might actually need. So that's one way of giving back, like going to one of the consulting companies and buying a week of bug fixing or something like that. That's one way to achieve it, and the other one would be for the actual project or the actual open source software component to create a foundation wherever in the world um, that's typically not that important anymore um, and allow for donations to that entity. Well, you will get the microphone. There's, for, well, for better or worse, no shortcoming of foundations who will happily take and process the money. I mean, there's the Document Foundation, there's like the FSF, there's Software in the Public Interest, there's Software Conservancy, there's GNOME, there's so many foundations. And while it's, well, if you only want to handle money, then it might be easier, smarter, and much more straightforward to just, well, go to one of those organizations who will happily deal with that. Of course, for resilience reasons, for the resilience reasons, it might be smart. You still have an, have, a, have an own foundation, but well. Well, for sure, there are already a lot of foundations out there, but if I'm not using GNOME, um, but I want to give back to the project that I'm using, then the GNOME Foundation is not really the right source to go to. Yeah, true. True. Any more questions on the topic? I think it's impressive that I, uh, although I didn't say anything, I covered what you wanted to hear. <laughs> Are there any good reasons for uh, companies not to use open source software, especially uh, what you think are valid reasons for, in some cases, choosing closed source? That's a tough one. Yeah. So, so that's one thing. Um, the reason that everyone can make changes to it is something where you might have um, reasons to say, okay, I don't want to use open source software for that. Um, but what? I don't. I don't know. We we should we we should possibly talk to the developer of the presentation software I'm using and donate some money to him to fix it. Um, so pretty much all of the reasons apply. Um, 
there are good reasons as well, like software not being available. Or as I, I mentioned, the blue and the red company for ERP solutions or for business applications, um, open ERP certainly doesn't scale that well compared to those applications. So if you really have a massive amount of data, there are good reasons to go to a proprietary vendor and buy their solution instead. Um, but there is no reason to fully rely on one proprietary vendor. And there are actually a number of good reasons besides those that we mentioned to not fully rely on one. Um, the vendor lock-in that we talked about is really like you have the full choice in open source. And it's not only about the applications that you use, but you can also choose the provider you go to. Um, you can easily migrate your directory service from one distribution to the next because it's still basically the same. But if you try to migrate from one proprietary um, directory service to another one, that might not be that easily possible. Um, so you're really free to pick and choose who you are using for which part of your stack. Roman, wake up. No. Okay. Any other questions? I still need to fill up 15 minutes. Come on. Help me. I have one. Oh. Uh, if, for example, for OpenSUSE, uh, how we can resolve the case to say, okay, we, we would like to see some certain fix inside our project, whatever. And we say, we, we make a call to users and to find some uh, legal entities or enterprise mainly uh, helping in sponsoring a hack week or hack at them somewhere with some people. How this will happen? How? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> Yep. So, I mean, for the, for the concrete case of OpenSUSE, um, you can find basically any company and set up something for that. Um, so, imagine it is not just, okay, uh, we do uh, really something. It is a cross-needed, uh, a cross, sorry, a cross-need by several enterprises that want stick together, yeah. uh, pick a place. We know that most of the time one of the SUS office is a key place because we can access key people is easily oh, to try it. easier. <laughs> easier than uh, if we are outside or if we try to bring these people during one week. Uh, it, uh, yeah. Um, I think I know where you're heading to, but I'm the wrong one to talk to about that. Okay. So in, in, in general, um, if you are an, a company and you want to do something for the open source community or for an open source project, you can of course always go there and organize a hackathon or whatever um, together with this project and fund them a fun week in, I don't know, Dubrovnik, Croatia, um, to work on the project. Um, that's always something that you can do. If there are multiple enterprises, then it gets a lot co more complicated because then you're again in this situation where you need some legal entity to handle the money that five different companies are giving you. Um, but that could, for example, also be one of the, those companies. So. Um, that's not an unsolvable problem. Now Roman has a question. Now I have another one. Have another one. <coughs> um, very often developers don't really like it if there are companies that make use of open source software and don't contribute anything back to it or even sell open source, uh, uh, open source software. Is there anything we can do as, a, as an integrator like we are one? or uh, as, as companies that make use of open source and support it, 
uh, to remove that uh, type of uh, mistrust and distrust and, and also, d you know, that certain attitude type of disgrace? I think there's very little that you can do about um, people not liking enterprises using their software and not giving back. Um, that's a an attitude thing, and I don't think that you can really change that, or that there are any measures to change it. Um, I think you can try different approaches, like be happy that someone is using your software and not only for fun, but actually for achieving something, for doing productive things with it. And in the end, why did you open source it? You open sourced it for people to use it and to have the the freedom to use it and the freedom to change it. So you didn't open source it. You, of course, open sourced it also because you wanted other people to work on it and maybe to get something back from them. Um, but as a matter of fact, I think most open source developers are also open sourcing their source code because they are already receiving a lot from the community. And there are a lot of individuals, of course, out there which are just consuming and not contributing, which is a bad thing. Um, but I don't think that we can change the world in that regard pretty much overnight. It would be good if more companies are giving back. I think a big challenge for many companies is the ability to give back. And that's not only in terms of missing legal entities to donate money to, um, but in some ways maybe they don't want to donate money because they don't have enough money to give back to the community with monetary things. And then that's where the, the ability to contribute gets harder um, because unless you're a software company, you can basically not give back in any other form um, than giving money to someone or some entity or maybe advertising the use of open source. And that's most likely the easiest way. Um, when it comes to companies selling open source software and not contributing back, um, there are licenses for that that can help you with that, at least to a certain degree. And as long as someone is at least, uh, and if someone is providing support for some open source component, and in that way selling open source, I'm pretty sure he is giving back because he will at least educate people about that. He will, if he need, needs to fix things, and in most cases he will fix it upstream. Maybe not for the reason that he wants to give back to the community, but at least for the reason if he installs the software at the, his next customer, the fix is already in, and the fix is also in, in a newer version, so he doesn't have to handle it twice. After all, if there is a million people using it and a hundred people contributing, still have a hundred people contributing, yeah. and thereby an efficiency that is unmatched by anything else. Yeah, I, and I, I think that's that's the, the the main point about it. I mean, yeah, many people are using it. Very few are giving back. Um, specifically in the enterprise, a lot of companies are building on top of uh, of open source software. Are making money because they have some open source software underneath it being it the operating system or some other co open source components, um, and they are unfortunately not really giving back much, um, but we need to live with it, or we need to go routes which we actually don't want to by using licenses that really enforce things like that. And that would also be a bad thing for open source in general, at least from my point of view. So I'm still managing to get the last eight minutes filled until Darix will start. Good. So and I don't need to dance. That brought me just a very interesting insight that I never had. Open source is the business model of spammers. We <laughs> uh, send out a million and we are happy if we get 100 back. <laughs> um, pre pretty, pretty much open source relies on the model of spammers. I send out one million mails and if I get one back, I'm still happy. Um, yeah. 
Pre pre you could you could summarize it. It's inter actually an interesting insight. I never thought of it that way, but that's good. I guess I will use that in my next talk about such a topic. I will talk about Nigerian spammers and how they influence open source or how open source influence Nigerian spammers. But they are actually a good business usage of open source because most of them are using open source software to achieve their goal. And at least in some weird part of my hat, you could consider that a business model and a business. Any other questions, interesting insights into spammers and open source? Uh, hi. Uh, what do you recommend to uh, pair uh, commercial products for uh, collaboration like exchange? What do, uh, what, what do you recommend to use as an uh, open source project? That's that's a very tough one, um, but the best option, as Robert just said, would be Colab as a real groupware solution. Um, it is not one-on-one -on -one feature-wise a migration path for Exchange, but it allows for the most parts that actually are used from Exchange because I've never actually seen someone really using Exchange to its full extent which is also an interesting thing, that the proprietary software typically is so overloaded with functionality that you don't use everything that is in there, but it got developed because someone threw money at the company to get it. And typically in the open source world, you get an extra tool for that. Is uh, Colab ready for enterprise and uh, smart devices? Um, they have some push stuff in there, and I would consider it ready for enterprises, and there is actually a company that is um, behind many parts of the development of Colab, and that is also offering enterprise support for Colab. So yeah, yeah. So and there is a way to give back by buying it, <laughs> or by buying support from them. So that's a solution for exchange. Anything else? Darix, do you want to ask a question? No, I just want to answer them. Okay. So, which one do you want to answer? Are enterprises giving back to open source software? Um, what open source software components are used in the enterprise? Oh, you have your own question. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you got your own questions with you. Um, so to fill the last gap, those are the picture credits, thanks to Creative Commons. I didn't write it on my slides, but Creative Commons really rocks. Um, I tried a new and different format for this session. Um, less content on my slides than typically, and completely different slides. I hope it at least somehow worked, although I didn't manage to fill up the time once again. Um, I think I should just lower my expectation in terms of time I'm talking. and propose shorter sessions. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, feel free to a ask. And with this, I would like to gladly hand over the stage to Darix for his HA proxy session. <laughs>